Hi, this is Peggy from Roar. So today our guest is Julien Bro. So Julien is the CEO and founder of Art Bacon. And Art Bacon is a great fintech that helps Canadian, Canadians actually plan, budget and invest. So uh, they've been having a lot of traction and I'm very happy to have Julien uh, today with us. I'm and happy uh, to be on your show, Peggy. Thank you so much. So today we're going to uh, chat, as always, about uh, the new normal in financial services. So uh, are you ready to work? Yes. Okay. So first question, um, uh, what do you think would be some of the major lasting impacts uh, of COVID uh, on the financial services industry? I, I think it's, it's mainly accelerating what was already happening. Uh, so to me, and I'm in the wealth uh, vertical uh, of fintech, uh, so I, I think advisors ha having only one channel, which is like getting their leads through like a networking events and, and sign their clients in their kitchen, th this era is over. I'm not saying that when people can actually go to the kitchen, some will not go back. Uh, but uh, like it was, and I had so many conversations because we're doing a lead generation for advisors and they were saying, this is what works and we're not interested in, in other ways. So I think all the advisors and all the, the, the institution will be ready to have another patch uh, that involve like signing and, and serving a customer uh, through digital channels. I, I think right now it's like forever this is the new normal. Uh, I'm not saying they're not going to go back to like more traditional ways, but I, I think this channel is open and will stay open. I, I hear you. In terms of regulation, do you see some regulations changing, you know, for uh, enablement, for example, of this type of new, uh, of new channels or in general? Actually? I, I think it's because like the, the regulator never said like you cannot do a KYC and use uh, e-signing and so on. Uh, I, I think it's, it's just going to be about like more flexibility around uh, and because there, there's the, the law and then there's how the regulator apply it. So I think they're going to soften a little bit their stance and, and all those kind of things. Uh, and, and there's a lot of stuff that I would like to change the regulation. But if you ask is COVID going to change the regulation by itself, uh, I, I think it's just going to, uh, you know, force the regulator to kind of like look at, you know, digital approach and, and just be more flexible around it. Yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, in terms of a global financial order, do you see the crisis having an impact on, you know, maybe the relationship between China and the US as superpower, the fact that we have so much debt or cyber attacks, anything you think is going to happen in terms of a global financial order? I, I don't think anything that changed completely, like, you know, on online fraud was already happening. Now it's more intense because people are confused. Uh, so honestly, like, I, I don't see any major shift. Like, it's just an acceleration. The future is happening faster. Like, you see in the U.S., like, th there's a new generation, and I think Robinhood, uh, like, triple or quadruple their user base, and you have a lot of unsophisticated investors entering the market and those people will kind of uh, get more knowledgeable with time so it's kind of accelerating like what is the normal uh, process of people getting older and starting to invest uh, it, you know it's just to push toward the future so piggybacking on that what do you see in terms of uh, new competitive landscape who do you think is going to win from that crisis I think like there's a lot of opportunity right now, like and we see it at Art Bacon, uh, people with, and this is like the perfect storm. On the one side, like you're worried about your investment because of all the volatility. On the other side, you're uh, worrying about your source of income because uh, you know a lot of companies have been closing. So it's even worse, like way worse than what happened in 2008. Uh, so people are like reevaluating. Uh, their their finances, whether it's like, uh, you know, their advisor, their budget, everything. Uh, so I, I think, and, and on the other side, uh, online advertising got cheaper, all sorts of advertising, TV advertising is cheaper. And you see a lot of, I watched, and I very rarely watch TV, but I watched TV recently and I saw a bunch of like advertisers that were not traditional because all the traditional advertisers kind of pulled out. So you can get very cheap, TV ads and probably billboard and so on. 
Um, and uh, so it's a wonderful way for any financial institution that want to grow. Uh, I think those that instead of being like, we'll cut everything and see what happened, which is the majority reaction, those that will be like, we're increase or advertising budget and those that had already invested because it's too late. Even if you started investing in, in March, you're not going to develop like a digital uh, acquisition channel, but those that already invested in those channel and that increase advertisement will, will be winners. Um, in Canada, like we're quite traditional. So we'll, we'll see at, at the end of the crisis or in the next few months, like who, um, who benefited from this crisis. I would say like startup are well, uh, position, but the other th on the other side, like fundraising got harder. So like, you, and, and we saw even today, I think uh, Stack, which is like a, a challenger quasi bank in Canada was acquired by US players. So I think the, the, the FinTech that raised money just before March are mm -hmm. in a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful position because they will be able to consolidate and grow while everyone is scared. Uh, and the startup by nature is, is not really scared of incertitude and uh, so, so they will benefit like the, the traditional players. I think some are more bold and will benefit and some will, will contract. And in terms of traditional uh, financial institution, where do you see their transformation going? I think they need to accelerate their transformation. We already have seen it in, in, in Canada. I think um, CI investment purchased the remaining share uh, of uh, Wellbar, the robot advisor that they acquired. I mean, they were controlling it, but they, they, they bought the remaining shares. I, I don't know the inside story, but probably they wanted to do a deeper integration. Mm -hmm. um, so I think now is the time that, you know, they need to invest and uh, we're going to see them like acquire FinTech and we're going to see them um, prioritize those digital project that were usually not bringing most of the money, like the profitability of those companies were from their old traditional channels uh, because the, especially in the well business, uh, older customers have the more uh, asset under management to get and older advisor catering to those people. So basically all those like new channels to acquire people 25 to 40 uh, were another more performant and were like uh, second place. Now that you can't go see those, those people in traditional yeah. channels, uh, they, they become like first priority. Uh, so I think a lot of projects will mo move up uh, in terms of a priority and you're going to see more uh, activity in terms of a merge acquisition or partnership with FinTech. Yes. I, think, I think you're going to see you're right, a lot of m and as well with these FinTechs that might have been in a tougher space. Uh, yeah, and the, and the startup that cannot fundraise, they're going to become yeah. cheap and have like an edge in terms of like starting to invest in digital technology a few years ago. So, so it's, it's going to be perfect for them. Exactly. Uh, speaking about the transformation, uh, a question a bit more personal. So did you uh, pick up new habits, hopefully good habits during COVID? What, uh, what did the crisis change for you? I mean, we're a, a software company, so we, were, we didn't install a single software to allow us to do what we're doing. We, we, we had already had like, I think we had one employee that was remote. Uh, but uh, the, so I guess I got used to manage a, like a, a truly remote company. Uh, that's, that's not so like at the beginning it's friction, but everyone lived through this transformation. Like uh, it needs to, you need to kind of be more intentional about talking to each of your employee because you don't meet them. Um, and like, it didn't change much to be honest. Uh, I, I personally don't like working from home. So I, I went back to the office when I was all to, but all my employees are still at home and they like it and they're productive. So at the end of the day, I think even when the situation become normal, I'm going to be more lax about having a policy that people can work from home uh, yeah. if they feel they're going to be more productive. So that's interesting. I was speaking with someone from friends from a large bank this morning, and she was telling me that pre-COVID, every time an employee wanted to work from home, she had to do paperwork to approve it, even oh. all the day. So you can imagine the shift in mentality in these countries that are probably a bit more traditional. Your software company in North America, I guess people are going to align probably way faster than what we see elsewhere. So yeah, and what, what I've seen a lot of startups doing is that they're not, you know, abandoning their office, but they say like, we're not going to, usually a startup is growing, so you rent more and more and bigger and bigger. And they say like, that's it. 
even if we triple employees, we're, we're going to have like moving places. If you want to come, come. If you, you know, you, you complain, maybe we're going to buy you like a place at a co-working space, but we're not going to invest in real estate. Um, but uh, that makes a lot of sense. And that's going to make uh, the fundraising uh, easier. So you're not allocating money to, to real estate, yeah. which is kind of dead money. But uh, thank you so much, Julien. That was really lovely to chat with you. Thank you so much for your insights. And uh, good luck with everything. And, and thank you for taking the time. Thank you, Peggy. Thank you.